he always engaged people in conversation I mean, he spoke to them in all their different languages you know um there was a group that came in a family and um they were all very beautiful women i'm not even sure if there were any men in the group the way i remember the story maybe you've heard it and they spoke spanish so he started talking to them in spanish and he just out of the blue says do you know this song some very traditional spanish song and they said well of course we do little did he know that they were actually a musical singing group <laughs> and they started singing it right there in the emporium and it it was like disney was putting on a show because they were dressed very nicely and they all started singing in beautiful harmony and the crowd just stopped and gathered in the emporium for the show that he had basically started just mm -hmm. by looking to it. <laughs> so that's the type that he did. So the other um, salesman story, the car salesman story. Oh yeah. So I bought my first car from my parents. It was a, a big long Impala. It was like a giant land yacht. And it was green. <coughs> it was avocado green, remember from yeah. the 70s? I bought it for five hundred dollars. And then I decided I wanted a different car. I think I because I was buying my mom's firebird or something, but Anyway, um, I advertised it in the paper for $200, and I got no takers, none, zero, 200 bucks, not a single phone call. So I asked my dad if he would sell it for me, so he said sure. So I gave him the car, and um, he proceeded to advertise it, and he said, what do you want for it? I said, I want 200 bucks. I said, you can sell it for whatever you want. I don't care. I just want my 200 bucks. He goes, okay. So he proceeded to advertise in the paper for like $500. The phone rang <laughs> off the hook. <laughs> he got someone to come and he negotiated with them cash plus trade. He got, <laughs> he got $300 cash. Mm -hmm plus a trade-in of some Dodge car of some kind, which he then turned around and sold for like another 500 bucks. <laughs> you only got 200. I got my 200. <laughs> I got what I bargained for. I couldn't complain. But it sort of taught me about perceived value. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Something I exactly. didn't appreciate until then. And then my other story was, it's kind of vague why we were doing this, because I am not a big fan of baseball, but for some reason, we were going to a baseball game. Was it a friend of mine and I and my dad and I don't know, but we went to this baseball game in Los Angeles. What's the team in Los Angeles? Angels. Angels. Okay, yeah, Angels. So we go to the Angels game. And he had a couple extra tickets. And so he was um, kind of just, I don't know if he made a sign or if he was just kind of waving them around. But there's people that come, you know, to see if there's extra. So he found this um, these people that needed extra tickets and he stole the tickets to them. And so money changed hands. And then, I don't know where, what, what possessed him. We, we, got to our, we got to where we were sitting and he was looking in his wallet. Maybe I said, cause I wanted, I would like some peanuts or something. And he realized that um, they had, he had not given them the correct change, that they had given him a hundred and he gave him change for a 20. And they obviously didn't notice that. And he had just like a lot of extra money in his wallet. Somehow, something like that. Um, and so uh, they were sitting right in front of us. And when they showed up, he said, hey, um, count the money in your wallet and see if it's correct. And they kind of looked and they're like, mm, they weren't sure. He goes, you're kind of short, like, you know, so much money, right? And he goes, they're like, yeah. He goes, I didn't give you the right change. And he gave them the change. And uh, they were so happy because right about then I would say, okay, wait, can you wave down the guy? You know, the guy coming down the aisle. Um, and they're, and I said, yeah. they said, well, what do you want? I said, well, it's just a Coke and peanuts. And, and they said, well, we'll get you whatever I want. Well, then I'll have a Coke and peanuts and popcorn too. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think maybe we almost, in all the stuff, that, the haul that we took in, we almost got the money back. But anyway, it was, it was pretty cool. And it was a good lesson, you know, about yeah. honesty. So that's all I remember right now. Talk a little about how my dad, he's just, 
an outgoing person. He would talk to anybody. Um, I think in the obituary I wrote, a stranger is a friend he just hasn't met yet. And that's really how he went through life. So I remember when um, my husband and I were in New Orleans, to marry when my mom and dad went with us. And we went to a plantation to go tour it. It was at the end of the day, we had a tour, we were hungry, they had a cafe, but there was a line, so we had to wait. We were really hungry. And my dad's like, well, I kind of want to know like what kind of food they have. So he gets out of the line and he goes into like the center of the cafeteria and he's walking around looking at people's plates. <laughs> <laughs> Steve was mortified. He's like, what is he doing? And it's just like, for me, it's like, yeah, that's a papa thing, like, whatever. And the next thing we get up to the front of the line, so we lost track of him. We get up to the front of the line, he had sat down with people because he had asked about what are you eating. They started talking to him and when we got to the front of the line, he was already sitting at a, someone else's dinner table talking to them. And then when we walked up, he's like, this is a good dish, Mary. This is what we should order. And sure enough, we ordered it, but that's who he was. He just didn't, just didn't you know, no strangers. He didn't, was, wasn't fearful of people. You know, yeah. talking to people, getting to know people, just so he picked interesting. picked me up at LAX at midnight, and we got lost in East LA, and he just whipped a U-turn and pulled yeah. into a liquor store and got out and went inside. I mean, it's 1 o'clock. East LA. East LA. <laughs> and he just walks in there like he owns the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. Asked for directions, and off he went. Off he went. <laughs> a man that asked for directions? I know. Yeah. Can you imagine in that East East LA. never happens? <laughs> <laughs> never happens. So I just... It was just such an epitome of, of who my father was, and I, and I got a little bit of my encouragement to just talk to anybody because he, it didn't matter what station of life you were, if you you know seemed like you were super rich or not, he just talked to everyone, on on the same terms in the same way, and he respected everyone, and he thought everyone had a story to tell, and he'd get it out of them, and sure enough, he did. People would just talk to him and say whatever. Um, but one of the more recent memories I have is when uh, a couple years ago I came over, I was there for work, and you had all that jewelry. Remember all the jewelry <coughs> that you wanted to give me? I guess Aunt Veronica had a bunch, and we were just going through all the jewelry and looking at it. And you know, by then, he, he had 